period panel is sponsored by Active Iron. Use the code HERSPORT30 on their website www.activeiron.com to get 30% off. We are delighted today to welcome Irish rowers Africa Kyo and Sunita Pushbore to the period panel. The period panel is sponsored by Active Iron and you can get 30% off using the code HERSPORT30. Just visit activeiron.com and enter the code at checkout. Thank you both for joining us today. We're really excited to have you on. Thanks for having us. In terms of rowing, it's a it's a really grueling sport. How important is it to ensure that your body is well looked after and getting the right nutrition? Um, I think it's, you know, very, very important. Like, obviously, the training is important, but without the proper nutrition and sleep, like those, those things, you're not going to get very far. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, we've noticed a huge difference um, since we've been, t- like, paying particular attention to our nutrition side of things, like, just our recovery and performance has gone up. In terms of menstrual cycle, your body is experiencing different things each week. How do you find your menstrual cycle impacts your training? Um, I think, like, obviously I track um, my cycle and, like, I think for us, like, our training, the periodization of that changes too. So, like, heavy weeks, light weeks and things like that. I try not to pay too much attention to where I am in my cycle because I kind of just almost want to go into the training as if I'm, you know, 100 percent. Or I think if I start thinking about it too much, I get too caught up in if numbers are down or, you know, things like that. So I try not to read into it too much. However, I do think like if you are um, if you do have your period, you kind of have to be a bit nicer towards yourself. And, you know, before you go into the session, you know, obviously, if it's a hard session, you might be lying in bed, like looking at the clock and like, oh, I have to get up now. I have to go to do X, Y, Z. And, you know, you might need a, a more motivation to get yourself up. But I think, you know, in that case, I just tell myself just kind of go and finish it, you know, not to worry about what like the watts I'm producing or what I'm lifting. And yeah, for me, it's just actually about getting through that session. And that's the Go ahead. And like a lot of girls in the team, obviously everybody's hitting their cycle on the different days. And I think you kind of don't expect everybody to be 100% uh, in training every day. So we do see sometimes somebody's doing really well, somebody's not doing so well, but then it changes. So it just shows that everybody's running on different cycles and it's never going to be like, no one's going to be synced up perfectly on a day. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why on a team it's kind of good not to be caught up on the numbers, not to be caught up on the, what, what day of the cycle it is, just... We're kind of used to doing our best every day anyway. So if your best today is not as good as it was yesterday, there is obviously some reason. It's not like you're not trying hard enough. So mm-hmm. I think, yeah. I think as well, like if anyone ever gets emotional, it's almost <laughs> just like, oh, must be that time. <laughs> Could be me one week or someone else the following week. And you just have yeah. to kind of like be, well, that was me last week and just kind of obviously be, be there for them. And, you know, um, it's not a, it's a regular occurrence, unfortunately, for one of us. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of it do you talk to the coaches openly about it and it sounds like you do within the group a little bit anyways um no I don't think like I wouldn't speak to my coach about it and I, I don't necessarily think that's probably okay. the right thing to do but just haven't um haven't done it in the past um I kind of feel like I know myself enough you know how to manage myself um I think if I was to talk to someone about it, it might be the team doctor or team physio or something like that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily speak to the coach about it because again, like I said, we kind of would just get on with the program uh, regardless of what's going on, you know, because it's such a big training group and it's a training program for the whole group. It's not like me as an individual, you can't tailor it around to my cycle or someone else's cycle that we just kind of get on with the training. I think, I would only mention if it would affect my performance in the day and if it was important day, let's say selection trials or something like that, I probably would maybe say that I'm not at my best and I might need like, I don't know, another race in the evening or something like that. Um, yeah. In terms of uh, like the obviously the group of nutrition and that, um, is that something that you have uh, spoken about um, and that page to kind of make sure that you're feeling correctly um I don't think we would go into the details of like the nutrition at different points of the cycle but we would look at 
you know, we get our bloods done regularly and we see the different levels of, um, you know, our iron or hemoglobin, like a lot of things, our cholesterol and how like the, our, our diet could impact that. And I suppose if you were, you know, there's like different people on the team kind of suffer differently, I don't know if suffer is the right word, but um, they might have, you know, uh, lighter, heavier periods that they might um, need to take, um, you know, extra care of their iron levels or things like that. So I think it's about kind of being open um, with their nutritionist about that and for her to find a solution then and to manage, um, manage what's going on and to kind of prevent uh, any loss of iron. I think actually that uh, leads on to the next question nicely. Um, obviously, periods do cause blood loss and then can lead to inadequate iron levels and low energy. So, um, Sunita, how important is iron in your diet? Uh, it's very important. Like for me, if I didn't do sports, I probably wouldn't pay as much attention to it. But as as an athlete, you want to be at your best perform, a best do your best every day. And obviously, when it comes to competition, you want to. You want to make sure your body has everything it needs. And once you, if you look after your iron levels, obviously that's a huge benefit to your body. Like your hemoglobin goes up and uh, you're not, you're recovering maybe faster. You're not as fatigued. And uh, like that would be my prime reasons why I would take extra iron, like extra, I mean, not just from food, but also the supplements. So, and I think we're quite lucky that, uh, where we take active iron is really gentle to your stomach as well so you actually can do it all the time and uh, it's not it's not kind of making you feel uncomfortable as well so that kind of ties in well into what we need to do every day. I think that was the next question was uh, <laughs> about your relationship with active iron so you've, you've been you've been taking yeah. products for some for some time yeah. and it's been a positive experience for you. Yeah, it's definitely easier on the stomach. It's not as heavy as maybe the other products would be, although I have used other products. But uh, if you have something that's a bit more gentle to your stomach, but is as good, then obviously that, that's the choice, you know. Yeah, no, definitely there's uh, a lot of people experience side effects with different iron products and um, active iron has a, a lot of positivity around it. Um, so it's interesting to get your feedback. Um, Active exercisers and endurance athletes can struggle a lot with iron levels. Um, Africa, I've heard you struggle a bit with your iron levels in the past. Tell us a bit about your story. Yeah, well, again, I was kind of oblivious to it really until I started um, training down here full time and getting my bloods monitored regularly. And, you know, as competitive as we are, that's the first thing when we open up our bloods. What's your iron? What's your iron? Like, we're yeah. always comparing. Competition. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think yeah, I started to realize that mine was so, so low. It was really low. And, um, you know, the kind of doctors and uh, all the staff were kind of saying to me, that's low for a normal person, let alone an athlete. Um, so, like, that was something I really, really had to get on top of. And, you know... I started taking a few supplements and they just weren't agreeing with me at all. I remember the morning, yeah, I remember the morning, uh, one morning of a trial, um, it was foggy and the race was postponed and it was such a good thing it was postponed because I actually was in, I remember I nearly fainted. I was just feeling so unwell um, because I had just started taking the supplement and it just was not agreeing with me at all. And I didn't even click that it was that that was making me feel well. So then I stopped taking it for a few days and I kind of bounced back to what I felt was normal. You know, obviously I I was probably struggling without even realizing. Like, I think that was another thing for me, the fatigue that I was probably experiencing from just having a lower iron level. I just assumed that was, you know, I was, yeah, I was new to the program you know, I was obviously very young and very keen, trying to like try my best every day. And I was just floored every day. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of oblivious. I just thought that was normal. Um, and then I was, you know, I tried a few different products. Active Iron wasn't even out at the time. So I was just trying everything I could. You know, I was changing the dosage like maybe two, three times a week to try to spread it out. I was even taking it nighttime to see, oh, I'll sleep through the discomfort. You know, I was really trying everything I could. And it was just really frustrating then. The next time I'd go to get monitored, my levels would still be low. And I was just kind of at the stage where I was like, this is making me feel so uncomfortable. Um, I'd actually rather 
go without it and struggle through this fatigue um, you know that um, that my normal levels were giving me because I just wasn't seeing any benefits at all from taking the supplements and it was our nutritionist who she knew obviously the, the problems I was having she heard of this new, new supplement active iron that was coming out that was you know specifically designed for people who have a lot of discomfort and so yeah that was I'd say about four years ago maybe the stage and I started taking it then and I just I was kind of every morning waking up trying to like see oh do I feel sick and I was like no so I just kept going and I was kind of upping the dose to see was I having any reaction to it and yeah no it was just from then on like I started to see the benefits straight away yeah no that's that's brilliant before like there are lots of people on well so um, are there any kind of other things that you've noticed like you mentioned about the jet lag just to one that you thought of me, um, you know, about the lack of performance? Um, what other kind of benefits are there? Um, well, I think like the performance wise, though, it is yeah. huge. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, we're training more and we are going to get naturally fitter and faster. But I do think if you ever get a blood back where your hemoglobin and ferritin is quite high, you can kind of say to yourself, well, yeah, I've had a so real- mentally- Yeah, yes, I have it all, so I just need to work hard. And that's yeah, it. Exactly. So it's like the placebo effect yeah, sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how it works. I mean, every time you get blood back and if you see your iron is a bit lower than it used to be, you're like, okay, I need to get back on it straight away so to make sure it doesn't go too low. Because uh, especially during the winter, I think when we do so much training that it, it kind of drops down quite a bit. And then once you start taking, just keep it up on a normal level and just kind of try to avoid to go down that route when, as Africa was saying, when she took low iron fatigue, took it as a normal, like, post-training fatigue, which actually wasn't the thing. You know? um, I think so, as well, like, if you, for me, like, when you're low, it's really hard to get a higher iron level. But whereas when you start from a point of a higher level, it's just easier to maintain, yeah. you know, rather than trying to climb up, get your levels up. Um, that can be the difficult part. And for me, that was my challenge. Um, um, but once I kind of got to a level, I found it quite easy to maintain. And actually, funny enough, like the more iron that I do have in my system, the more I find I can tolerate this, like, the supplement like initially when I was taking active iron there was a small bit of symptoms but as I got used to it and as was my iron got um higher and higher I literally don't even don't even notice taking it <laughs> yeah when you when you crack the oil there is a, a, like a salt and vinegar yeah. smell of it <laughs> Um, you are both active iron brand ambassadors now, so tell us why you're so passionate about the product. Well, it kind of helps us, in a way, kind of keep our high performance levels. And obviously, you need to train as well. You can't just take active iron and be really fast. You also have to do the work. But I think it's just like to know that you take the right things to help yourself to go faster. I think for me, it's definitely all about sport because I probably haven't suffered as much from low iron as Africa. Has, so for me, it's all about like performance benefits. And then it's really gentle to your stomach. There is absolutely no issues with it. Yeah, I think it's great that they recognize that, you know, it is so important to athletes and that athletes probably are a huge part of their market. And to be honest, I, I think that they're raising great awareness for that too because, you know, for me, like I said, I didn't have a clue. I was oblivious um you know I was training probably about 10 years before I realized that I did have low iron like I remember my sister suffered with with low iron as well and it wasn't until I actually got tested that I realized you know I was um suffering a bit too with the low iron and I think it might you know help people in the future you know they might go get tested and realize that they have the same same issues so I think it's great that they're raising awareness for athletes and it might be something that they think about and consider, you know, part of their, their routine. Um, some young girls may leave sport because of challenges with their periods. Um, it's still a, a taboo topic sometimes. And in terms of that, like, do you remember getting your first period or being worried about periods when you were younger? Uh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> uh, I remember all the girls in my class had already got it, and I was kind of waiting, you know, almost excited about it, and I don't know why anymore because it's 
because everybody else had it. Yeah. That's why. Um, I had the same. I remember finally getting it, and um, yeah, my sister arrived over with a box of roses, and I was like, unreal. If this is what you're, yeah, if this is what this means from now on, then happy days. But yeah, no, then uh, I slowly but surely started to realize the reality of it, and I think when you're so young, it's kind of so awkward because like you don't really. Like now, honestly, we almost don't shut up about it. Like everyone just keeps <laughs> like, yeah. like open booked, oversharing all their their problems. Yeah. So yeah. Whereas <laughs> um, when you're younger, I suppose it's probably a bit harder. And I suppose we can also relate to each other a bit more now because we're athletes and it's, you know, we might be experiencing the same thing. But yeah, when I was younger, I suppose we wasn't spoken about as much in school and growing up. Sita, do you remember what it was like? Were you nervous yeah. about it at the time? I actually had similar situations after, like lots of girls in my class already had it. So I was like, oh my God, when is mine going to come? You know, it's, it's like, come on, let's do this. And then you just, yeah, very quickly you realize it's not as nice as, no. as uh, it's just you feel the same as everybody else now. And that's about it. But uh, yeah, it was kind of, I never had any conversations with my mom even about it. I just somehow, I don't know, figured out what to do and all these things. And uh yeah, you just kind of get on with it. And I used to suffer from a lot of cramps as well and up to the point when I used to get sick. And yeah, that was not nice. So. Yeah, I almost think growing up, like people are like suffering in silence almost, you know, like yeah. like I remember I was, there was, I had a few experiences of getting sick as well. You just get a really bad headache and then I kind of knew, oh, it must be coming. And then I just would have to vomit and then that would be the start of it. Like, but... Like you can't, like you wouldn't be going around kind of telling people that, I suppose. You might say to your mom or whatever at home, but um, yeah, it, it just kind of just really complicated your life. I think when you're growing up, like things like if you're going on your holidays or you're going swimming or if, yeah. if it fell in line with a regatta, like, you know, most regattas just have like portaloos or, you know, <laughs> they don't have the best facilities. And I think it just totally complicates um that whole that whole side of things and you have to just kind of I suppose be a bit extra prepared for for what you might have to deal with have you any advice for young girls who might be struggling with their periods and then tips and tricks was the next question for what you've learned um, along the way that that might have made some, some other people um i think advice wise i think it's almost <laughs> about it it's, yeah. it's very natural and it happens to every girl at some mm-hmm. point, you know, so there's nothing to be ashamed of or. I think the more attention it gets, though, like through things like this, the better. And I think, you know, it might almost be up to like older sisters and things like that to go yeah. talk to someone because, you know, it, it probably is harder to make the first, you know, to start the conversation, you know, maybe it's up to kind of older people to start reaching out to younger girls a bit more and, try guide them and you know normalize it a bit for them because you know it, it might be hard for them to like to, to come come to you with a question or something like that but yeah I think it just needs to be normalized a lot more have you tips and tricks for regattas and training and that type of thing uh, just always have a supply in your bag of- <laughs> And if you don't, somebody else will have it. So just yeah. ask around. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, having obviously a supply of tampons or pads, whatever you use, having spare gear, you know, enough for a week if, if necessary. Um, actually, like, I think even, you know, like Sydney was saying, if you don't have it, someone will. Like, being confident enough and to try and ask even a stranger if they did have, you know, a spare tampon or pad. I remember, like, we're in Italy at the moment, and I remember maybe two years ago probably this stage some Italian girl from the club came up and asked someone for a tampon and I was like she's fair play to her like that she just walked up to a group of people she didn't know at all and um yeah no like I think it's just kind of to to obviously be prepared as possible and um but if you're not some other yeah ask for help yeah Yeah, like don't go you know don't go without like obviously ask for ask for help if you need it I think that's kind of like that situation I think anyone would any girl would help totally girl, well yeah without yeah. any questions yeah yeah so absolutely you know, tactical sleeve classes you know, <laughs> you your sleeve and just sliding it into someone's hand or whatever but yeah, yeah. do what you have to do <laughs> yeah. yeah 
yeah yeah I think yeah. for us you know as probably the senior athletes it's probably good for us to be behaving like that or whatever you yeah. might call it in front of like maybe the under 23s or the juniors yeah. um just so obviously if they ever needed needed something that they weren't afraid to come to us no, I think it's really important that you talk about like the communication and conversation around it because um, it does just reduce the stigma around it. Um, I know you've, you've said you haven't really talked to coaches about it that much, but if somebody is uh, struggling with like figuring out their periods on um, that kind of thing, um, you know, would you recommend them to either talk to coaches or maybe somebody in the club or um, in terms of opening the conversation, maybe clubs looking at um, talking to, to teenagers and, and trying to help them through um, you know, periods and, and just and um, opening the conversation to try and encourage more girls to stay in sport. Yes, I think, but the problem I think is that a lot of coaches in clubs are male coaches, so there's not enough female coaches around. And I think that might cause some of the kind of discomfort for younger girls to talk about it. But um, they almost don't want to know, I think. Yeah, that's probably yeah. the attitude in a lot of places, you know, and they'd rather a female came in and, you know, looked yeah, after yeah. that. Yeah, and like to be That'd honest, be yeah. To be honest, like most junior crews, there's probably usually a female involved anyway. I think they usually have a female coach involved always if it's a group of girls. So I suppose they would probably leave that up to the female. But I think like I think you know everyone kind of needs to know. Everyone needs to be on the same page. For the majority of girls, it might not be an issue. You know, they might be able to train. Um, they might not experience you know bad symptoms, but. More than likely, there will be one or two girls that really suffer and, you know, that need, I suppose, a bit more help in figuring out their training and what they can alter maybe to help them through it a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, I think you gave us great advice and thanks a million for, for sharing the story. Um, we will wish you the best. Thank you. Thank thanks you. for having us.